There's going to be opportunities for you to help somebody else prosper. There's going to be opportunities for you to take somebody else out of a process that's that's meant to grow them or keep them in and cover them. All, everything that God does for us, we have an opportunity to do for others. That's what leading with grace is. Welcome to the Kingdom Confidence Show. I am your host, Coach Jesse Cole. Thank you very much for being here with us today. I am excited for you. I am excited for what God is going to do through you, to you, for you, and in you, what he's doing in you right now. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Today we're talking about uh, leading with grace. If you are watching this show, I believe that you have been called to lead in a specific area of gifting. It doesn't matter if you are the CEO of a company or maybe you are the janitor. It doesn't matter where you fall on the org chart. I believe that you have been called to lead in a specific area of gifting. And leadership is not about position. It's about influence. And so if you have the ability and the capacity to influence people, then in that you are a leader. So you are on this show today um, because you are connected with us. And all we do is encourage and empower leaders. That's all we do is encourage and empower leaders to be a reflection of Christ. Today we're talking about uh, leading with grace. And this is a topic that is, uh, for me, it's extremely important uh, because if you are like me and you, you know, you are a leader, you're probably going to leadership conferences. Uh, you probably read leadership books. Uh, listen to leadership podcast um, are fixated on people who who are uh, exemplifying um, leadership at a at an excellent level. So you are like this is your world, right? This is your world, and because we are so in tune with uh, being good leaders, we want to make sure that we are the kind of leader that we're supposed to be. So maybe you've taken leadership assessments, maybe you the, the Myers Briggs or the DISC or Strengths Finder or all you know spiritual gifts assess all these assessments that pretty much tell us the type of leader that we have been that we are or that we lean into, right? So you've probably done all these things, all these assessments to ensure that you are on the right path. But I've never seen an assessment that taught you how to lead with grace. Like this is a learned behavior. This is something that we have access to, but learning how to do it effectively um, is not, I haven't seen it taught. Um, even though we have examples of people who do it, we have biblical examples, we have modern day examples of people who are doing it. It just doesn't seem to get taught. Um, and I believe that it's important whether you are leading one person or a thousand people, it's important to lead with grace. There are a myriad of leadership styles out there, right? And no matter what your style is, grace fits your style, right? And today we're going to talk about like what that looks like for us in the modern day, what that looks like, what grace looks like. Um, there's, there's something I've been practicing. I've been intentional about practicing this in my life. And for me, my greatest form of leadership for me is my family, right? My greatest form of leadership for me is my family, leading my household, leading my wife, my wife, leading my children and seeing the, the fruit of that in their life, in their schools, in my wife's business, right? So making sure that I'm in tune, that I'm in alignment with who God is calling me to be as a leader and also instilling that into them as well. Like that for me is if I can't lead my home properly, far be it for me to try to lead my clients or go into an organization and coach and teach and train and facilitate if I can't lead my home properly, right? And in the, in the, in the Bible, it talks about that in, in Timothy, right? It talks about, you know, if you can't be a leader in the church if you can't lead your house. I want to share with you a few quotes that I found um, on the internet, on the interwebs, right? Um, that really speak to, uh, that have the heart of what I want to share with you today. This one is by Arthur W. Pink. He said that grace can neither be bought, earned, or won by the creature. If it could be, it would cease to be grace. I like that. You can't earn it. You can't win it. You can't buy it, right? Because if you could, then it wouldn't be grace, right? Because grace is not something that we can earn. 
It, grace is not something that we can earn through our works, right? I like that. That's, that's scripture. Max Lucado, he said this, grace is the voice that calls us to change and then gives us the power to pull it off. That's some good eating right there. Grace is the voice that caused that cause us to change. Cause, C-A-L-L-S. Grace is the voice that caused us to change and then gives us the power to pull it off. Right? Grace, it helps you come face to face with your inadequacies. It comes face to face with those, those un, 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 unrighteous beliefs that you may have. It causes you to come face to face with your real self. And then it causes you to elevate, right? It, it equips you to elevate. It gives you the space to elevate. Another one, St. Augustine of Hippo said, For grace is given not because we have done good works, but in order that we may be able to do them. Woo, I like that one. Grace is not given not because we, we have done good works, but in order that we may be able to do them. Mm -mm -mm. And lastly, Philip Yancey says that grace, like water, flows to the lowest part. Come on now. Grace, like water, flows to the lowest part. So grace, like there is no limit to where grace can go. All right? There is no limit to what grace can do. All right? There is no depth that grace cannot reach. There is no height that, 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 that grace cannot reach. Grace is like water. It flows. It can get to where it wants to get, right? To where it where it's allowed to go. So leading with grace, right? Not leading from your head. Not leading from a not, you know, merely from a book. Not leading from your intellect. Not leading from you know with with with, with the money in mind. Like leading with grace. The other day I had an opportunity to, to teach on this for um, another group that I'm a part of, Kingdom Driven Entrepreneurs, and we were talking about the power and the purpose of grace. And for some reason, I just couldn't let it go because I had never really looked at, uh, looked at it, looked at it like like we taught it the other day uh, on Tuesday. And so I was reading Exodus, right, the Book of Exodus, uh, chapter 33 and 34, where it's, where it's talking about where the, the the Israelites, God's chosen people, were on the cusp, were on the precipice precipice of getting into their promised land. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, you know, Moses went up into the mountain uh, to be with God and and God presented him with the with the tablets that he had written with his own finger. Moses descends from the mountaintop and he hears the people celebrating and he goes over the Aaron and says, what's 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 happening over here? He was like, what 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 is, what is the celebration about? And when Moses was on the mountain, he was up there too long for the people. They got impatient, right? And so they said, you know what? Let us make our own God. So they took off all their jewelry, gave it to Aaron. He threw it, he, he threw it into the fire, melted it down, and then made a calf for them to worship. They forgot that fast who their God was. So when Moses came down from the, the mountain, that's what he saw. What have you done? What have you done? Threw down the tablets Right. And began to to mourn. Right. And so went into the tent of meeting. Right. And, you know, consulted with God. And God was like, listen, I'm still going to I'm still going to give you the promise. I'm going to send an angel ahead of you to wipe out everybody that's there so that you can walk on in it. I'm still going to get I'm, I'm keeping my promise. But here's the thing. I'm not going to go with you. Your presence, my presence will not be with you. I'm going to give it to you. You're going to be successful, but you're not going to have my presence because of these stiff-necked people, these hard-headed people, these impatient people, these fickle people. I can't do it because if I walked even one step with you, I would destroy you. Oof. So I'm going to grant my grace to you. I'm going to still give you the promise. I'm still going to allow you to walk in it, but you're not going to have my presence. What is success without God's presence? It's futile. Success without God's presence is futile. And what is his presence? My, and my belief, and as, as I'm reading on, as I'm studying more about grace, God's grace is his presence. God's grace is his presence in every situation. Because where, wherever he is, where, wherever he is, the solution is there. You don't have to worry about anything. 
right? Now, Moses did petition God and say, God, listen, if you're not going to go with us, I'll, why even go? Why even go if your grace, if your presence isn't with us? And God considered, right? And then came to an agreement that he would go with them because of Moses' petition. Do you have a leader that's, that's going to petition on your behalf? Are you a leader that's going to petition on the behalf of the people that you serve, your clients, the people that you work with at your job, your team? Do you come to God and petition on behalf of the people that you have been called to lead, the people that are assigned to you, right? So that God's grace can go with you into these meetings, right? God's grace can go with you into these campaigns. God's grace can go with you as you try to achieve a bottom line. Is it? Are you the kind of leader that, that does that? for the people that you're called to, right? So in order to benefit, in order to understand the benefit of God's grace, we got to understand what it looks like to have the, looks like to have the absence of his grace. We have to acknowledge what it looks like to have the absence of his grace. Without the, without God's grace, without the God's, God's presence, everything is futile. It's futile, right? So what is God's grace? I want to share this with you. What is God's grace? And we're talking about leading with grace. So in order for us to lead with grace, we have to have an example of what grace looks like, right? What is God's grace? God's grace is his decision, period. God's grace is his decision. His decision for what? His decision to help us out, right? His decision to keep us in. Coach Jesse, what are you talking about? This is what I'm talking about. There are going to be opportunities in your life where you're going to be faced with a challenge and you're going to be tempted to try to get yourself out of that challenge. But you're going to look around and you may not have the resources to get yourself out of that challenge. God's grace is his decision to help us out of those challenges, to provide a way of escape, to provide a way for us to have a solution when we don't even have the resources to come up with a solution. God's grace is his decision to help us out. God's grace is his decision to keep us in. There have been times in my life where I was, where I prayed and I asked God, God, like this is whatever you need to do to get me out of this, like get me out of it. And I remember hearing, I love you too much to remove you from the process. I love you too much to take you out of this process. God's grace is his decision to keep us in because as we are in this process, we are maturing. We are developing into who we, we, we've been called to be, right? We are elevating our point of view. We are getting stronger. We are getting wiser. We are getting more equipped to do the work that he's called us to do. So if he pulled us out, we wouldn't become that. So his grace keeps us in. And it could be worse than what it is, but his grace it holds off the enemy. His grace, it holds off what could be worse and it covers you while you're in so that you can become who God has called you to be so that you can serve the people that need what you have. Whew. God's grace keeps us in. God's grace covers us up, right? God's grace is like, it's, it's his hiding place. Meaning it makes us look better than what we really are. It covers up our inadequacies. It covers up the, the lack that we may have. It, it, it covers us up and it makes us look better than what we really are. You ever been late on a bill and the company granted you a grace period? That grace period was an opportunity for you to get it right. I'm going to work with you. We're going to come up with some arrangements until you get it right, until you can meet this standard. Man, that's what God's grace is for me. It covers me up until I get it right, right? And then when I'm prepared, when I'm ready, I will come forth as what? Pure gold, right? God's grace doesn't just cover us up. It also exposes us. And it, he doesn't, it, it doesn't expose, he doesn't expose us to hurt us. He exposes us to heal us, to, to bring a sickness to the surface 
so that we can become healed, so that we can begin to serve from a place of power, right? It, it heals us, right? It exposes us, but we're still covered. God's grace is God's decision to make us prosper. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. For his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in that law does he meditate day and night. He will be made to prosper. God's grace is his decision to cause us, to make us prosper. Maybe you don't feel equipped to do the work that you've called to do. There is no reason why they should have picked your resume. There is no reason why you need to, why you have that job. You're not even qualified to do what you're doing on paper. But God's grace, yes, God's grace is causing you to prosper. Because there is something that you need to do in that environment. And lastly, God's grace is his decision to test our stewardship. God's grace is his decision to test our stewardship. He's always trying to grow us and, and, and make us better. He's Whatever you have in your hands right now, it doesn't even belong to you. It belongs to him anyway. So he's given you an opportunity to learn how to steward it properly for you to not take ownership of it, but for you to be a good steward of what doesn't even belong to you. He's given you space to get it right. He's given you space to learn and he's equipping you. He's giving you the opportunity to learn how to be a good steward over what he has given to you, what he's put in your hands. So Coach Jesse, how does this even play into leading with grace? Because God, as, as, as God is, is making his decision over your life, you can take these same principles and apply it to the work that you're doing. There's going to come a time when you have to cover somebody that is not showing up like they need to. There's going to come a time when you're going to have to extend some grace to people that may not be hitting the target. And you're going to have a decision to make. Either you're going to pound them, either you're going to you know, uh, put throw them under the bus, or you're going to extend some grace. Now, now, grace is not the absence of accountability. It's not that. We still have to be accountable. But grace says... I could destroy you. This is what God said. Us. I have the power. I have the resources to, to, to crush you. But because I love you so much, I'm giving you an opportunity to get it right. Grace is God's decision to give us space to get it right. There's going to be opportunities for you to help somebody else prosper. There's going to be opportunities for you, right? To, 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 to take somebody else out of a process that's, that's meant to grow them or keep them in and cover them as they're going through this process. All, everything that God does for us, we have an opportunity to do for others. That's what leading with grace is. It's knowing that you have the resources and the power to finish a person or to destroy a person or like you have that power to, to fire somebody. You have that power to, 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 to reprimand somebody, to, 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 to make them feel less of a person. But you, because God extended his grace to you, you, in leadership, extend grace to them as well. You still hold them accountable. Grace is not the absence of accountability. But it's your ability to extend grace to them. Grace is his presence. Grace is his reflective power in our lives. We're able to do things out of our outside of our human ability, right? Grace is grace God's grace is his character demonstrated through us. This one this one hits home for me. God's grace is his character demonstrated through me. And how was that done? Galatians 5:22 through 23, the fruit of the spirit. When we embody the fruit of the Spirit in our leadership, we cannot help but to extend grace. Uh -huh.